a moment. It looks like, yes, it looks like the Facebook stream, uh, the YouTube stream is up and running, but we need to make sure our YouTube stream is, I mean, I'm sorry, our Facebook stream is connecting, so bear with me here. Looks like it's going, but it looks like Facebook is a little slow, so let me just reconnect it here. This will just take me a moment. It should connect any second. It says that it's waiting for our live video, so <clears throat> let's make sure that that's happening. Great. I know that you can hear me over on YouTube, which is good. I like that story. I'm just going to go ahead and reconnect our Facebook. So sorry about that, everybody. Just takes a moment for me to do it. And then we will, <coughs> pardon me, we'll get started on our, um, on our bead weaving extravaganza. Of course, today is the day that they reconfigure our, <laughs> the look of the Facebook page. So that's okay. That's what always happens. So here we go. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to very <clears throat> briefly pause the, um, the feed for just a second so I can get, um, so I can get uh, the Facebook feed um, connected. So bear with me here just a moment. I'm going to pause. There we go. So let me uh, know, make sure you guys let me know that uh, you can hear me on both of our platforms. It looks like we're good still on YouTube. So if you can see me or not see me yet. Yep. And I think we just connected. Yes. I love that story. Who says I can't be a fantastic IT person. <laughs> there we are. Alrighty, I'm coming at you in three, two, and one. Here we are, everybody. There it is. All right, well, thanks for being patient. Uh, with that little connection, uh, sometimes, uh, especially, I think Facebook is going through some kind of retooling of their pages. So, um, so whenever they change that interface, there's always a little, a little glitch. But anyway, we are here. Uh, I'm here. Janice is over on our YouTube stream uh, doing some moderating over there. And I know that Drea and Gita, the dynamic duo, are over on our Facebook page. Um, Drea is doing some a, a kind of a fun thing today. <clears throat> if you got the newsletter, you know that I did not tell her what I was doing today on the live broadcast. So uh, while we speak uh, in real time, uh, if you're watching this live, she's going to connect all of the stuff that I'm going to be using today. And I have some really great um, uh, ideas, I think, for you with this monthly mix. <clears throat> so let's get some, first let me get some coffee in me. There we are. Um, I wanted to say to our wonderful friends to the north of the border, Happy Canada Day to our dear Canadian friends. Um, you know, Chris, my husband, uh, has deep roots in Canada, in the great uh, plains of Canada, of, of Saskatchewan, um, Star City. I'm going to throw that out there. That's, you know. Um, and... Uh, so a uh, big shout out to my Canadian relatives, um, but yes, Chris's mom was a first generation Canadian, uh, and uh, so we have deep, deep love. I've always had deep love for our friends to the north. So happy Canada Day, everybody, um, and I hope to someday get back up there to see you guys. Um, another uh, big uh, shout out, we have uh, a couple of things going on today. Today is July 1st. 
we made it to July, you guys. This 2020 craziness, July. We've made it through June. Here we go. We're in summer. Um, so, uh, so hang in there, everybody. Uh, we're still, we're still getting through this, but we've done it. July, July is here. Um, that means July means a monthly mix that I'm going to be working with and chatting with you about that today. Um, and I also have another, a, a couple more things I wanted to, uh, to let you know. Uh, today is Wednesday. If you're watching this live, today is Wednesday, July 1st. Tomorrow, uh, I'm having a special little broadcast. I'm going to be a guest. I'm going to be the talent. I'm super excited. My buddy Francesca over at the Makery, some of you guys know Francesca Watson and watch her streams. I'm going to um, put up this, my closing slide so you guys can see it. Um, I'm going to be live over on Francesca's stream tomorrow on Shop Talk Live. She does broadcasts every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And this lady, I will tell you what, and I think she's watching over on Facebook. Francesca, I think you're there. Um, she is awesome. She's an amazing metalsmith. Um, and so she's having me uh, on her show tomorrow. And what better to do then on a stream than a knot that'll be perfect for metalsmiths. So I haven't done this knot on this broadcast yet. Um, so if you wanna, uh, you can find Francesca at Makery Arts on the um, on Facebook. You can follow her, um, and you can watch me tomorrow. It's 1 p.m. Central time, so that means I'll be on at 11 o'clock. Um, Pacific time and uh, two o'clock Eastern time. Okay, so it's going to be fun. So we're going to have a good time. Francesca broadcasts live from her studio and she always does some cool stuff. So I'm going to teach them the silk wrap. And I know a lot of you know the silk wrap already, but we're going to bring a lot more people into the silk wrap love. And then we're going to do this cool closing knot that I like a lot. Okay, so that's what I'm doing tomorrow. And thank you, uh, Gita just linked the Facebook page over in our YouTube chat. So thank you, thank you so much. And this week, Francesca is doing a fun uh, series on getting back to basics. So this will be this will be a fun one for you guys. Um, oh, I'm great and 8 p.m. CET. Perfect, Gita. You're so good uh, with all the times. Okay, so, and thank you for the hair love. I love it when you guys comment on, I gave myself another COVID cut. I had Chris, just like a good punk rock husband should, get out the the cutters like we were in high school and just shave that sucker off. And I just took the scissors to it. So you know what? COVID cut, kids. COVID cut. It's what all the cool kids are doing nowadays. Um, okay. Oh, and happy birthday, Ray. It's your aunt's 102nd birthday that is and she was mowing her lawn that's awesome i love that well happy 102 to your dear auntie uh it looks like emily is also on so it's great uh great we're all here okay well since we're all here let's get started without further ado okay um oh and i also wanted to mention just a quick shout out before we start uh, tomorrow, July 2nd, uh, Chris and I have been so busy and, you know, just kind of working and, you know, surviving all of that, that I didn't realize, well, we realized, but we kind of forgot. Tomorrow is our sixth wedding anniversary. So I want to say publicly right here on air, right here on Bead Shop Live, happy anniversary to my dear husband. You know, uh, without our Chris things, you know, the bead shop uh, packages would just pile up around the shipping desk. Um, so a big happy anniversary to my sweetheart. So that's that. Let's get to looming, shall we? Looming is looming. Uh, I have here in front of me, I've got so many. I love this. Yeah, everybody's here. I love it. I love I feel like we're just all together in a virtual bead world, which I love it. Um, so here is what I made yesterday. Let me show you this. 
last night as Chris and I were watching TV and I was done with my work for the day. I started on some more work. No, you can't keep me away from the beads, right? Good thing. And I did this little woven strip, okay? And I used our uh, deep dish design tray and I love it. You know, when um, I came back to Bead Shop and I was all about the bead weaving, the, the looming, the loomed projects. And Janice, and I was all, well, what loom do we use, JP? And she goes, we don't use a loom, we use the deep dish. And I'm like, what you say? So I watched the video and this really is one of my favorite looms. I mean, I love our jewel loom. Don't get me wrong. I love the jewel loom. Juliana did a great job with it and I use it a lot, but you can weave with just about anything. If you don't have a deep dish, you can use like a pan that has sides, right? Like a jelly roll pan or like a shoe box or like whatever, right? Um, so all of that, so you can make a loom out of just about anything. So, um, so I'm going to show you how I, uh, I guess, what do I want to say? I want to dress when you're using a regular loom, you dress the loom when you put your threads on it. So I'll show you how I line up the threads for a bead woven project. And then I've got some other things. We're going to look at some different closures. For this one, we're going to use this Marrakesh crimp. And I, um, I really like these crimps. And I think that sometimes it's a little daunting um, because uh, you need to glue it. And when I say glue, glue strikes fear into the heart sometimes of beaters, but we're going to go through that. Also, I'm going to show you on this one that I, and it's again, again with the blue thread, Richburg, really? <laughs> That's maybe someday I'll learn to contrast, but let me put a little bit of a white card under here. That one's kind of too big. Well, I'm just going to have to fold it. That's what I'm going to do. There we go. You can see I have put the, the thread on here already, and we're going to use... Janice is saying prepare the loom, which I like too. But dressing the loom is a, a weaving, a traditional weaving term as well. So I think we can use them both. Uh, this is the Oasis, um, the Oasis, what do I want to say, it's not, uh, the Oasis clasp, I guess, or the Oasis closure. Um, it is great, and it's going to weave right in there. I'm going to show you how to use that. Uh, before we get any further, though, prep, yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah, what? yeah, thread, whatever, whatever you're going to do with the loom, we're going to do it. Um, I want to show you over here. We've also had some busy bees in the bead shop work land, right? These I'm going to use, so I'm going to put them over here. Brittany, oh, that Brittany, that clever lady. If you watched the in place videos that she did with her beautiful necklace, um, this is actually the, um, the mix for July is a Brittany mix. She and Janice kind of got together, um, but the, the, the inspiration was uh, all Brittany for this mix. And we're gonna look at it a little more closely. So I sent her one when we chose it and I, um, and she sent back just like, I don't know, <laughs> days later, not that long. A beautiful bracelet in that uh, using the techniques that she did in the in place piece. Can you see how she did that closure on the end? Isn't that just spectacular right there? This one's going to drop on Friday. The project page and all of the stuff for it will drop on Friday. If bracelets aren't your gig, look at how cool that would be just as a pendant like that right there. You could do that portion. You could also make this into an earring would be amazing. Um, so this is going to be, I, I think, a really amazing, amazing piece. And it uses um, two tubes of 
the July mix. She used two, I believe. So it's beautiful. We also have, we've had some more busy bees. What a surprise, that Ali Mori over on the bead table. Ali emailed these to me early. So if you're not early this morning, um, if you're not a member of the bead table, it's our private Facebook group for bead shop fans, and we would love to have you join us over there. All you need to do is jump over, answer a few questions, and uh, um, we'll be glad to let you in and have, us jo have you join us. So the name of this mix for July was called State Fair, right? And so Allie, Allie did it, right? She uh, took her inspiration uh, from the different state fairs, right? And so the um, this big one over here, and I'm gonna try and see, bear with me here just a second. I wanna make sure I get the names of these right. So um, hang on a second. Vintage fair, that's what that one's called. Okay, so this one is, uh, I think that's the one I'm going to have to have Alley. Yeah, Vintage Fair, then there's the Pendant, then there's Cal Expo. Okay, so here, this is the, this one here, the California State Fair, which I love. Look at the, the colors are exactly the same uh, as we pulled for this, um, uh, for this mix. How coincidental. I love it so much. This one's called, um, uh, let me look here real quick again. Vintage Fair, that's this one. And you can see the piece, how it's just a simple wrap using that big star button that we carry. And can you see how Allie has just color blocked it, right? So she's used the colors um, and you can see how it all lines up and she's ombre it just a little bit, which I love. Now the one on uh, the right hand side of your screen up at the top, that one's called, I think that's the Cal Expo one um, that Allie did. And Cal Expo, I love this one. It's uh, based on the Trails End project that Janice conceived of. And you can see she used that beautiful red and scarlet button that's a great focal, I love it. And then this one here, this pendant <clears throat> down here at the bottom, you could also downsize it a little bit and make it into an earring, which is amazing. Um, and she used the I Ching coin. And then not unlike uh, Brittany did with the Bollywood uh, necklace, you can see the kind of the chain of the necklace is uh, a twisted macrame, which is amazing. So these are all over in the group. Um, but this, oh, Allie, you've outdone yourself. These are exquisite so now we're gonna go to my little efforts here so uh, here we go let's jump in uh, it's a little hard to see so I'm gonna keep this paper here so you guys can see it um, let me talk to you uh, first about how to thread the loom okay when you're doing this and I'm sorry it darkens a little bit with the paper but I have um, I have a, a, a paper behind it so you can see it. So when you thread the loom, okay, you want to decide, it, it really depends on how wide you want your, um, your bracelet to be, okay, or your strip of looming because this you can also, the way I'm going to close it off today, I'm going to weave all of these back through. So it's just going to be a strip of looming. So you could use this on a um, on a garment, right? You could stitch it on to like a jean jacket or something like that, um, or a belt or something. So I'll show you how to weave all this back. But what I did was I took the um, Marrakesh crimp and I kind of laid it across, I measured it, and then I figured how many um, warps I needed to um, thread. And so you always need one more cord than you do beads, right? Because it makes the channels. So I did eight, eight channels, which means that there are nine wraps around the loom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So when you wrap, um, it can be a little um, fiddly, but just 
just do it, just go for it, right? And so I'm using KO thread, but you could use whatever your favorite thread is. On some of my looming projects, I use for the warp, I use the micro sealon, and I like that too. So it just depends on, on what you like, you can experiment. Um, let me pull this a little wider here. And all I do is I grab my thread and I hold it here on my board. And I'm going the short way here because these bracelets are gonna be short. You could also do this the long way if you're doing a long loomed strip, okay? So I'm just, I would just wrap and again, and you don't need to get the um, channels perfectly spaced. You're gonna do that um, after you warp everything and you keep wrapping wrapping until you have as many strands as you need for um, for your beads so you can see here for this one I took the Oasis crimp and I actually held it up to this loomed piece and the mix is all eight dots okay and you can see here on the Oasis crimp let me get a little tighter in here you can see here on the Oasis crimp the the connector is about almost exactly the same size as that a dot bead so i knew when i held it in there and then i counted my little channels that is one two three four five beads across okay and so that's what i you can see here i did four and I'm just going to wrap one more around it. Now you can see with this when I did the four yeah it needs to be it needs to be five but it's okay if you wrap it and you're like wait a minute I need one more channel or you're looking at it and it's not quite right you put your beads in and you're all mm, no that's a little skinny you could always add a warp thread by just tying on another one. Okay, so I'll put that around. Whoops. I'll put that around. Cut it. So my mistake was very serendipitous. So you could see me do this. I did it on purpose, everybody. <laughs> no, it was just in my haste. And I can't count, evidently. So I'll just come in and I'll tie a square knot nice and tight so that thread is tight. But what you don't want, you guys, is to pull the thread too tightly um, because it'll stretch it, right? So you want a nice taut warp thread, but you don't want it so tight that you've stretched the thread, okay? And you'll see what I mean when you Hold this KO. If I pull on it, it's buoyant. It does have some stretch. Okay. So all of these channels, yes, Cindy, uh, the first four channels are made from one length of thread going all the way around. I think that we show on the video, um, I think we may show them that you tie them on individually. I'm not sure, you know, it's been so long since I've watched it, but I'm kind of lazy. So I just wrapped it around four times and then I tied it. But you can see since I needed a fifth channel and see how I'm using, you can't really, but I'm using my awl to kind of push them uh, together so the channels are kind of the same. But when you put your first row and couple of rows in, it's going to normalize your um, little channels here. Okay, so there we go all five are ready to go okay so super easy so i'm going to start and i'm going to weave this oasis clasp in uh right at the beginning okay you can do it at the end if you want as well but i want to show you how this goes and i don't think it's gonna um i don't think it's gonna get in the way too much but let's see yeah, Janice is saying the original, she um, she tied each one individually, but it works for me. I actually have never done that. I just wind it around, and it works just fine. 
Let me just get that there. So I have strung my needle. I'm using a size 10 sharp, no surprise there, but you could use a size 10 beading needle as well, whatever it is that you liked. And this is my leftover tube. So I only used about a half a tube for this loomed patch here. So I still have plenty to go. So I'm going to dump some of these out here. And on this one, I'm just going to pebble. I'm not going to have any kind of a pattern. Uh, you can see on this one that I did, I kind of put my colors in bunches and I went from the red to the purple to the teal to the blue to the sage green. Okay. And so I kind of did an ombre effect here, just not unlike what Brittany did on her beautiful wrap, which is here. She did an ombre and she added some of the gold, the bright gold shadows, the little shadows, which look amazing. And then um, you can see here, Allie did that same ombre just a little bit here. You can see uh, in this wrap under um, the vintage fair, you can see the little bit of, of ombre that she did the pebbling and then the ombre from the different colors. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to pick up, I'm going to start here. It doesn't matter if you start from right to left or left to right, doesn't make any difference. But I'm going to lay in, and I'm going to start kind of up at the top, not too high up, but um, this, since it's easy to pull this, um, this warp all the way around as you're working, if you run out of space here as you're weaving, you can keep going right you can pull this up and I'll show you that I didn't cut my other one off the off the board yet so I'll show you how you can move it around but let me get a little tighter in here so you guys can see this there we go so I'm going to stitch through once and my beads when I do my weaving I come in at first from the bottom so see how I've gone underneath there, that first one, and then I've got three channels to fill. So I'm going to get three beads at random, one, two, and three. Well, they are all red. I want them to be a different color, actually. I'll get a blue one. I said I'll get a blue one. This is a time uh, size 10 sharp. Drea is the needle that I'm using. But again, you could use the size 10 beading needle too. And see how I'm, gonna, I'm going underneath. And the first one is always fiddly, but just stick with it. And see right here, you're going to get this. Come on over. <laughs> Why do I feel like my hands are all thumbs? There we go. And you're going to get that last oasis crimp on the needle. Because you know who's the boss? Me. There we go. Okay. So now we have to arrange them. Okay. So I'm going to get my threads. And I'm going to place each little thread, sometimes your all will help, and it'll help so my fingers aren't in the way. There we go. So see how they all sit? Let me get tight. <clears throat> there we are. Okay. So they're all in there. Then I'm going to go back now with the first row, I leave myself an, a pretty good long tail because I'm going to weave that in later. But I go up at the top and I run everything back through so that my loomed piece, my first row, is sandwiched in between these two threads. Okay. Now I'm going to reinforce this. I'm going to go. I'm going to go kind of around. Whoops around the, I 
do that again. I think I undid it instead of did it. There we go. To kind of lock that in. And then I'm going to go back from underneath if I can. It's a little, you kind of have to go one bead by one bead. I like to reinforce that first row just to lock it in. There we go. And I'll thread my needle back through. And you want everything to be tight, okay? But not, no, you want it to be firm, right? Taut, but not so tight that you're having issues with buckling. That's the deal um, when, and some people find this, when you are weaving, bead weaving a long piece like this one, right? And you're weaving so tightly and you've, you've pulled your threads, your warp threads really tight, and you've pulled your weft threads, the weft are the ones that go from the left to the right, um, really tight, and then you cut it off the loom and everything is a little warped, right? A little, a little wavy gravy here. So you wanna make sure that everything is nice and uniform and and taut on this, but you don't want it so tight that the beads don't have room to breathe, okay? Visual tightness, not actual, oh my gosh, that's super tightly woven, okay? So now we're just going to, you can see I've got the channels here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just gonna put on some beads. Yeah, you can also use the looming needle. We have bead loom needles that are super long. Um, sometimes I find with the long needles, I have a tendency to snap them because I am a needle pusher. I like to kind of contort my needle as I go. So you have to be a little, um, you have to be a little um, careful with those looming needles that you don't snap them. So I've gone underneath my warp threads. I push them up through the channel to the top and I go back through. You could also use a big eye for sure. If I do any bead weaving with micro sealon, and I do sometimes, I will use the big eye and it's great. I'm going to put five more on, send them under, right? Push them up in the channel and push that through. Go down and around and tighten. Let's do a couple more rows, shall we? Shall we? One, two, three, four, five. You only have to count to five with this one, which sometimes for me is a good thing. Uh, and see here, I want, I want to show you this though before we go any closer. See right here, this little bubble of thread right there. You want to make sure that's when I want to just make sure that I tighten it up perfectly because if I do a few more rows and I haven't noticed that little thread bubble, a few more rows and my weaving would be too tight and that would be a lost cause, okay? So I'll just push this up with my finger and send it through the channel. Now this is a nice slim band and it would look, wouldn't it look great incorporated into something like Allie's Wrap? here, right? You could start this section uh, loomed, right? And connect the Oasis clasp to the button and then maybe add some, you know, once you've, once you've finished like one wrap of this, then go to like a different technique or put in some knots or put in some macrame or whatever. But I think this is a really good um, uh, way to start off or to put in the middle of uh, a wrap. And I think the six aughts are going to be too big. I've got a six aught right here. Let me show you. And the six aught and the oasis. I mean, if you're doing it, let me get a head pin here. It's a real good question. Uh, let me see. 
Maybe if you were doing eights on the outside and sixes on the inside, see that there? That might work, but you'd have to, um, you'd have to check it. But it looks like two six aughts sit in the middle of this link, okay? So, uh, but experiment and see how, see how that works for you. I'm gonna just do, um, it does look a little Christmassy. You know, sometimes the Christmas colors, they pull a little bit of blue in there, which I like. I love this blue and red combo. The um, bracelet that Brittany made, her, the bracelet that's based on her in place necklace, she's called it Macaw, which is kind of a good, beautiful homage to some plumage, which I, I like that. But that project, you guys, will drop on Friday. And just a reminder, and I'll say it again at the end of the broadcast, I hope I don't forget, but Friday, we're actually going to observe Independence Day here uh, at Bead Shop on that day. So we get uh, a day off on Friday. So there will be no free tip Friday, consequently, on Friday the 3rd. But I'll be back um, the following week. So don't, never fear there. But we are going to take... Friday off to observe Independence Day here. So here we go. So you can see I'm gonna um, measure this. This goes pretty quickly with the eight dots and uh, the looming, the weaving. There we go. Let me get my my tape measure. Let's take a look at this. So that's uh, just under an inch, maybe one or two more rows will give me an inch of beading. So let me just, let me just put those in, one, two, three, because then we'll have a good count and we can see how many rows per inch, four, five, bring that under, come on, my thread wants to catch. I'm using the denim, as I said, I'm using the denim, denim KO, but you can use whatever color you like, whatever works for you. One, two, come on, these beads are a little bouncy today, three, four, and five, and again, I am not putting these on with any um, plan, I'm just pebbling. So here's our final two rows. That should give us a full inch of beadwork. And let's see what it looks like. There we go. And you don't, again, you don't want to pull it too tight because you don't want your ends to kind of wobble in and out, right? So just a nice consistent tension all the way across. Okay. Um, let me measure. Yeah. That's about an inch worth of beads. So let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows. Nine rows per inch. Okay? So you can kind of do the math there and figure out your lengthwise. But I think that looks great. I love the way this oasis looks with that. So now I'm going to show you. I'm going to cut the other one off the board. You would, um, you would weave the ends in on this piece as I'm going to on the other piece. Okay, so I'll cut, I would cut it off the board, I'd take these warp threads and I would weave it back through. The weft thread is not doubled, Eileen, it's just single because then when I pass it back through it's doubled. And especially since I'm going to be weaving back all of these warp threads, I don't want to crowd the bead holes too much at the beginning. Okay. So here, uh, so let me cut it off and I saved this. I thought about doing this, maybe prepping a little bit more, but I wanted you to see me cut this off the board. Okay. So to maybe take away some of that fear of, oh my gosh, I'm at this point. 
and I've got to cut it off the board. Let me widen this shot up so you can see the whole thing here. There we go. That looks pretty good. Straighten it out. All right, so let me get these needles out of the way. So what I did for this was I, I wove the whole, the whole thing, and I'll tell you the length that I did. I have a six and a half wrist, so this is about six and a quarter. And then with the um, closures and everything, it should fit about right. Okay, so um, so now I'm going to cut it. It's all woven in. The ends, all of the waist, the, the, the ending threads have been woven in. And essentially, I just went back and forth in, in, in this center, kind of turned the corner, weaved it back through, and then cut it off. No big deal on both ends, right? So we're all set. So I'm going to turn this over. I've got a few beads in my box that are coming out here. Let me gather those in before they go all over. And I'm going to cut this from the board. Now, I want some um, length here, right? Because uh, I'm going to weave these back in. All right. So I'm just going to take my snips and clip. There we go. Clip another one. Use the threads. You could use the threads for another. I'm not sure what you're asking, Janice. Sorry, I'm not understanding it. But, um, so here it is. Okay. So there they are. And you can see that it's not warped, too warped or anything. And I'm just going to start weaving my threads back through. I know the floor is calling to those beads, right? And I'm going to start on this side. So let me get a little tight in here. Okay. Oh, to rotate. Oh, use the threads. I see what you're saying, Janice. What Janice is saying, and I'll do it on this one, just real quick, how I can rotate this whole thing before I cut it off. I said I would show you. So here's this. And all you do is you grab the warp threads, and you pull it up like this, right? And as it goes around, see it can just it just goes around the box, right? It just makes that little leap. So you can do a really long, long thread or long, long woven piece, okay, with this. But that's how that's how you move it around. Okay. So let me get my size 10 needle. I put them aside here somewhere. There they are. And you can start in the middle, you can start on the edge, doesn't really matter. But this is a little bit like watching paint dry, so bear with me here. But I wanted to show you the whole kind of, kind of soup to nuts here with this. So let's get those out of the way. I'm, I have this one on the end. And I'm just going to start weaving in, and I'll go maybe to the center. And I'll turn the corner here. And you're just establishing a nice thread path through the woven work. And as you continue, see I'm just doing two there, two there in the middle. And I'll choose different bead holes for each thread. So the ones on the edge, I'll weave more towards the inside of the woven section and the ones on the inside I'll weave towards the outer section. See how I am doing a little square there? I'm turning a corner with my weaving. Now sometimes I get a little worried that, I don't hear if my needle has come off, so I think that's time. You could weave it back in even a little bit more, but I think that's fine. So I'm gonna clip that one off. There's one. Let's do the second one. thread that, or needle that thread. Now up here, see it's coming up between these two beads. So I'll send it this way, I think, through those two. And see how it's pulling away a little bit here? So we want to just reinforce it 
so we don't have that pull. Sorry, I need to turn this towards me so I can see it. It's my field of vision. And the needle will tell you where it wants to go. If you're encountering some obstacles or whatever, just switch the bead you're going through. Okay. And then I'll come here, I'll turn the corner. Turn the corner several times and that will keep your beads nice and, or your, your woven in end nice and tight. I'm going to go over here, go to this row. Okay, no knots. I don't do any knotting. Just weaving back through. And maybe one more right here. Okay, so if any of you are knitters, you know the dreaded weaving in of the ends. I actually kind of like weaving in my ends because I know that I'm close to the end of the project. I don't know, it's so satisfying, I think, tidying up everything. So if this one's going, I'll put this one going in that way and making everything nice and neat and, you know, tightening things up here. I don't know, Emily, if you have any words of wisdom to add about weaving in. But again, you don't need to do it too far down. As long as you're kind of making some right angle turns here, nothing is really going to come apart. And this is going to be fairly, um, you can see where I'm, I've woven these in. The fabric or the hand of this is a lot, um, is kind of, a, is, is pretty sturdy. So as you weave in those ends, it gets a little tighter. And can you see how, let me get a little close up here so you can see it. Okay. Here, you can see there's a little bit of looseness. So I'm going to make sure that as I'm weaving everything in with these threads, I tighten that up. It's no big deal. And so Bonnie is asking if there is a pattern for this. So this is going to be over on our, on beadshop.com, over on the project page for it, Bonnie. But you can see, and there'll be a project map for it that Karen will take. Um, but essentially what I did, before I go any further with it, so you can, you guys can kind of see what I did. I started over here at, let me turn it, so it's at the number one position. I started over here uh, with the red, and I sorted my mix into little piles of the different colors. And I just about every inch or so-ish changed colors. That was it. Okay, so that's what I did with that. So it's not really rocket science and it's not a, a super amazing design, but it's solid, right? So just start with your color and just let it gradually go into the other colors there. And again, you can see this is about six and a quarter inches. Okay. And so there isn't really, um, Jan is asking, what do I do with the bubble of thread when you tighten that gap? You'll see, Jan, as I tighten it, the bubble kind of kind of almost disappears if it's not really, um, if it's not a huge bubble. Okay, so let me, let me do this a little more at Kate Speed if I can find where I put my needle. Here's one. This will work. Oh, it's right here in front of me. There we go. So I'll grab this next one. needle that thread and I'm going to start weaving it to this side because it looks like it wants because again that's gapping a little bit so I'll just close up that gap and especially these ends need a little bit of reinforcing right because there is only that those two threads going back in there so kind of weaving in and out of what I like to call the header row here. Again, tightens everything up and makes everything nice and firm. So we'll go down. 
and we'll go down and whoops this came off I need a little more weaving so I'll rethread it these shorter pieces sometimes your needle just wants to come off but that's okay see there's that gap and again you can keep pushing your beadwork down a little bit on these warps but you to tighten everything but you don't want to tighten it too much you don't want it to warp I'm going to go some long ways here because I was doing short passes so I'm going to do long passes with these there we go we're about halfway there I know it's a little like watching paint dry but bear with me here the payoff is going to be big when you see me glue that end on so and I really wanted you to see this process um, these closing off processes <laughs> I think are sometimes the most daunting right and since I wove this last night I'm kind of looking at this with fresh eyes right so this is where when I say I like to let things rest overnight um, this is really when it comes in handy because I've woven this whole strip you know I'm super close to the project right and I'm you know thinking about it overthinking it and stuff but if you let it sit until the next day um, sometimes all of that anxiety over it disappears and you can just look at it with fresh eyes and say hey I'm just gonna weave off here so um, letting it simmer is always a good way to go I see my friend Tammy just jumped on over on the Facebook feed Tammy I hope you're doing well in this shelter in place it's nice to see you always there we go this is a pretty fast project as well I did this looming uh, this woven section I don't know it didn't take me that long maybe about an hour and a half I think we watched maybe it was two hours maybe we watched two TV shows <laughs> do you ever measure your projects in TV shows I always do that that took me three podcast listens there we go so we're getting there And then, and you know, if you haven't jumped in to a bead weaving project, and sometimes we call this, in the bead world, a lot of beaders call this looming. And I know that weavers in the weaver world, that just grates on them like nails on a chalkboard. So I try and say bead weaving, but a lot of times it's kind of the vernacular in the beating world to call this looming but I know that looming is not exactly the most accurate title see how this this it's getting a little tight in those beads so I think for my other one my other ones that I'm weaving off I'll kind of jump over a little bit more there we go this is a little it's also a little I can see a little loose there sorry if I'm out of frame but um, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna close this and tighten it up what Lynn is saying that yeah she uh, likes to wait especially with crimping I'll tell you it really I don't know why maybe it's because when I'm making the piece I get so um, I don't know involved or whatever I don't know and so I have anxiety sometimes about closing it off it's like oh my gosh what if I make a mistake what if I screw this up I've spent this whole time making it only to have everything come apart when I clasp it so saving it for the next day when you're rested uh, will probably save you though usually I'm hustling to get projects finished so I can't always take my own advice I'm gonna go through this last bead here and then here there we go and here I'm just gonna keep going back through
And then we'll do that final one. I'm going to jump this all the way over to this end where my threads, I can feel my the bead holes are more open over here. There we go. And we're on our last one. <clears throat> Come here. And I didn't wax any of this thread. You can. I don't think I found could find my wax yesterday. You could do that if you wanted. I'm going to go back through. I'm going to go through this one, then all the way over there. There we go. And then I'll weave this here, because again, my bead holes are a little more open on this side. Just walk that thread over. And I like to finish in the middle of a row. I'm going to finish right. Right here. Okay. Oh, my needle came off, so it's time. I'm not going to weave in the other side, but you get the idea, right? Let me show you that closure. There we go. And that looks pretty flat. Let me get it a little wide. Okay. Um, and this, see how it's a little loose over here, but that's, don't, don't sweat it. You're going to weave all this in and it'll be nice and tight like on this side. So let me glue that end on, shall we? So this Marrakesh crimp, it's, see how it flares out just a little bit here? So I need to make sure that it's going to fit these beads. So I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm going to close it up just a little, right? And I'm going to test the waters here. And again, see how on the side, it's not quite a little bit hard for you to see, but it's not quite tight enough. So I'm going to just come in really carefully. You don't want to mark the metal. Did I do it too closed? I did, so I'm going to open it up just a little. There we go. And so it's nice and tight, but loose enough that I can get my beads in there. See that? Okay. So, all, and see how it just fits really perfectly. Though if you're, it would also work if your loomed section was a little wider, right? Like let's say that it was like this, right? And you had a little bit of overlap, like if this was your width of your piece. That would work too, okay? So this over here fits just fine. So these are in closures, I, I think. Let me tell you, uh, let me tell you, if you go under shop, you go under components and findings, and then from components and findings, you go to uh, connectors, I think. Let me double check. You can also type in the, um, in the search box, you can type in Marrakesh because they're the Marrakesh crimps. And yeah, they're in connectors. You'll see them there. You'll see the, the crescent crimp and all of those guys there as well. Okay, so that's that's all in there for you. Uh, let me get back to our main screen. Okay. So uh, let me glue it. So I'm going to use zap glue. Now, gluing, that's another thing that people get a little, you know, oh gosh, we've got a glue. Just take a deep breath and go with me, okay? We're gonna be just fine. Remember with glue, less is more. 
and we want to be really judicious about where we put it. So I'm going to use my Zap because it, you could also use E6000, but I'm going to use Zap because it will dry very quickly. It'll set up very quickly. I still will let this sit 24 hours before I disturb it. Um, that way the glue will have time to, um, to cure. Okay. So very carefully with my Q-tip, I'm going to get a little bit of that, my Q-tip, my toothpick. I'm going to get my glue on my toothpick and slide it in. Whoops, come back here. And you want to be really careful not to get it on the front or on the sides, but I'm putting the glue on the back channel of the crimp. Now I'm going to bring a little bit of glue forward and put it on both sides of the crimp. Just to use your, your um, toothpick like a little squeegee. Get it on there and kind of then squeegee a little bit of the extra off. Okay, so I've got the glue in there. I've taken any of the extra glue off the sides. Now, oh, and what Eileen is saying, you could use two Oasis to make it a wide bracelet. You definitely could. That would be great. Uh, okay, so now I'm just going to come in and with all the courage of my convictions, put it on and put it down. Okay, that's it. Don't, don't fool around with it, though I am going to show you how, see, everything's gripping. It's in there. So there it is. That's it. It's on. And I'll let it just sit. Okay, and so I'm going to slide that there. And I'm just going to let that sit. I'm not going to screw with it for a second. I'm going to throw away this extra glue because I will glue my hand to the table. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'll show you how, and I'll put it on this closure, how I'll close this up. <clears throat> and it all just depends on the length that you need. I like using a little piece of chain for this because then I can make it adjustable. So if I need a little bit of leeway, I, I can have that. So I'm going to use a, um, a jump ring, maybe this size. I think that's the five millimeter. And I'm going to connect it. And it looks like people are talking over in the YouTube chat about getting together. Janice would do a get-together um, about once a year, a beating get-together. We're talking about doing one virtually. So if you're interested in that, why don't you go ahead and email with um, email uh, info at beadshop.com. Uh, and we can send some information out about that, okay? Uh, navigating the world of Zoom, on your Zoom um, virtual meeting. So we'll play around with that. It'd be fun for Janice to be able to have her virtual meetings, bead groups again, or her in-person bead groups with a virtual group. So go ahead, if you have that interest, go ahead and email info at beadshop and then we can uh, play around with it from there. Okay, so I've connected that and then what I'll do is I will connect a clasp to that end. I'll connect it. I think I can just do it very carefully. The zap is probably set up by now. It sets up very, very quickly. I'll open this jump ring and put that on and this on. I'm using the round ones, but you could also use the oval, whatever you like. 
Okay, and yeah, see, this is in. This isn't going anywhere. I will definitely let this sit, though, overnight because you're going to need to let that cure. But let's pretend that this side is done. And you can see how that would look. Okay, and what I would do is, and I brought one of our Saturn beads as a little dangle for the bottom, like that, right? You could put a charm or whatever you want on the end, but that's, that's as easy as it is, right? Super easy. Remember, when you are playing around with this, um, with this Marrakesh, you really want to make sure it's the right size, uh, the right um, width right that it's open not too much and you can see how this flares out a little bit you want to just close it just a little bit um, you want to close it just a little bit there to uh, to make sure that it fits right okay so this is this is it okay and Janice is saying use two jump rings here but I don't know there's it's pretty there's a, a lot of room there. You decide what you like to do. I don't. I don't like my closures, um, for my clasp to be too wide. I don't like this to be too wide. So whatever works for you. Okay. Easy, easy. So you can see how it would look if I just bring that around, and you can see. Whoops! You can't see it. How nice that looks there. Okay. So if you can, you also, um, I'll measure this closure so you can see. It actually looks like this is a little long. So I wanna, I wanna measure it. So I'll, so this is about an inch and a half here. So we were at six and a quarter, seven and a quarter. It's about seven and a half inches door to door is what I like to say. So it's about, it's about right. Let's see. I like my pieces just a little loose. If you, oh no, that's, that fits actually just perfectly. So it just depends. If you're going with this closure, that closure, as I said, is about what did I say door to door? Just about an inch and a half. Okay, so you're going to add about an inch and a half to the end. But if you um, need it to be a little bit longer, you could always adjust it using the chain. Then you'll cut the chain off and add your little dangle or clasp or whatever it is there. So just to reiterate, we went over both of these pieces. I'll bring both of these into view so you can see them. Here's our friend with the Oasis. Clear up these threads. With the Oasis closure, and here's our friend with the Marrakesh closure. There we go. And we used our monthly mix for July called State Fair, designed by Brittany. This is our circle back chain that we uh, use a lot for these types of closures. Uh, right now, the July mix just dropped on July 1st today. If you're watching this at a later date and we've sold out of it because we do only make a finite amount of the monthly mixes, you can go to the monthly mix page and the recipe is there. So you'll need to buy full tubes of everything, but you'll be able to recreate it or put your own spin on it or whatever, whatever works for you. Okay. So, um, so the recipe, and that's true of all of our monthly mixes. The recipe is always up there. So you can see, uh, so you can create your own. On Friday, just a reminder, we're going to drop this project from Brittany, her in-place project that she used with the monthly mix that she designed, this state fair. Um, it's just a gorgeous piece, really, really gorgeous. And this, if you 
want to just make an earring, what a, an outstanding earring this would be, right? It would be really beautiful. Um, so that's it, kids. Uh, some last looks on Allie's piece. So if you haven't joined us over in the bead shop group, the bead table, you can hightail it over there um, and add yourself to uh, the entrance list. And Emily will review everyone and let you in. It would be great to have you over there. Um, as always, and oh, one more reminder, uh, tomorrow on the 2nd, I will be a special guest over on um, Francesca Watson's uh, Makery live stream. I'm going to be on Shop Talk Live with her. It's 1 p.m. Central. That's 11 o'clock my time, Pacific time and two o'clock Eastern time. Uh, it'll be tomorrow uh, over there on the second. I'm gonna do uh, a closure, a knot, and I know how much you guys like the knots. Um, Drew is saying all the ingredients are up on the project page for this project. So if you go to beadshop.com, you can get information on the project and the products from this broadcast. Also, sign up for the newsletter, you guys. We've been doing some fun things. My mini mix was um, uh, featured in the newsletter. All kinds of cool stuff. We've got a lot of stuff going on. So, you want to um, you want to jump on and get our our newsletter because that's the best way to stay in touch. Uh, Drea does a great job on those, and they're always full of information. Uh, so jump over to beadshop.com and find all of that because you guys without you and without your support we would not be able to be here uh, doing what we love uh, and bringing creativity and beadwork to you so we really really appreciate it just a reminder no free tip Friday on Friday July 3rd we will actually be closed um, in observance of the Independence Day holiday here in the US um, happy uh, Canada Day to those of you, uh, our friends to the north. Um, I also wanted to mention, uh, we really thank you for all of your patience here. Um, you know, California, we're still under a shelter in place, you guys. So things may seem to have opened back up, but they haven't really. So um, we're still practicing our social distancing and being extremely careful here in the office so that no one uh, contracts the COVID virus. So our shipping times are still a little slower than they might normally be but I promise that everything is always worth waiting for and we are uh, working as quickly and as safely as possible to get those orders out to you. So thank you, thank you, thank you from all of us here at beadshop.com for your support and your patience during this crazy time of 2020. Uh, stay safe, everyone. Stay healthy. Wear those masks. Wash those hands. Practice that social distancing and with a group mindset and uh, thinking about our neighbors, we are going to get through this. So thank you again uh, for your support. I will not see you Friday, but I will see you on Wednesday and you guys are going to love the project. I Maybe I'll give you a little sneak peek later in the group, but you guys are going to love it. All right. Have a safe and sane 4th of July, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining me.